So Noah Lyles is back in the news cycle and he finally gets exposed for the jealous athlete that he actually is. Or at least I think that's how a lot of people are framing it. So for those who do not know, Lyles last year had an infamous quote that really struck a nerve in the NBA community because he believes his biggest gripe and his biggest concern is that NBA players and NBA champions get to have this label of being world champions. And that's what really gets underneath his nerves. You know, the thing that hurts me the most is that I have to watch the NBA finals and they have world champions on they head. World champion of what? <laughs> the United States? <laughs> that is not the world. We are the world. We have almost every country out here fighting, thriving, putting on they flag to show that they are represented. There ain't no flags in the NBA. <laughs> now, I don't believe I've actually given my official response to this or my opinion on the whole situation or deal. And there's two ways in which I could approach it. First one being the technical official and by many people regards the correct way of associating and responding to what Noah Lyles is saying, and that is, yes, it is true. The NBA champions should not be able to officially be identified as world champions because they do not go around the world and match up with other countries for them to receive that labeling, that title of world champions. And even though, yes, in your heart of hearts, you may genuinely believe the NBA champion on a year-to-year -year basis would more than likely beat every other team around the world, we still have to have the formality. We still have to actually play the games for the labeling and title of world champions to be given to the NBA champions. So technically speaking, what Noah Lyles is saying is correct. But if I were to do that, and if we were to just ignore the common sense argument that a lot of people are having when it comes to this dialogue, and if we're just gonna play the technicality game, technically speaking, Noah Lyles is still wrong because the NBA does not refer to their champions as world champions. He does not turn on the TV and sees world champions across their head because technically speaking, he doesn't have that. Technically speaking, he has NBA champions across their head, and it's technically been that way for like 25 years now. It hasn't been like that since like the 90s. So if we're being technical about it, yeah, he's technically still wrong. And technically speaking, when he talks about how he doesn't see any flags in the NBA, it's just a USA flag, he's technically wrong because depending on the team that wins, there are several players that represent other countries around the world and they wear their flags when they win a championship. Now, if you wanna make an argument that back in the day when you actually did see world champions across your head and when the NBA actually did refer to their champions as world champions, that you have a gripe with that back in the 80s and 90s because it's not correct and it ain't go across the world and face other teams you know in other leagues i understand that i can get behind that and, and technically speaking um you would actually still be wrong because you don't know what you're talking about technically speaking in the 90s and 80s they actually did go around the world and when they took nba representation and they matched up with other teams and other leagues around the world the team that would come out of the nba would beat the shit out of every single team around the world Everybody, I'm Ahmad Rashad, and championship teams from around the world have come to Paris for the chance to try and take away the Bulls' claim of world champions. But it won't be an easy task for the Greek team, who have already won 11 games in a row this season. In McDonald's history, this tournament started in 1987 as McDonald's Open has become the McDonald's Championship. NBA 15-0. There have been some close calls. And Ahmad Rashad surrounding Michael Jordan. Bulls win at 104-78. Ahmad. Which then brings us to the other side of the argument, the more common sense part about it, which is even though, yes, we understand that the labeling a world champion shouldn't be really official, we understand the concept of these are the best players around the world. And even though we don't have the formality of facing these other teams and other leagues around the world, realistically speaking, the best players in those other leagues were more than likely playing the NBA, which means that they will be an even further talent deficit with a lot of these other teams around the world, which means that they would have absolutely positively no way of competing with any team in the NBA. It would be safe to assume that the team that won in the NBA would be viewed as the world champions. But even more information about Noah Lyles has came out with some of his discrepancies with Adidas and just the way that he believes United States views a lot of Olympic athletes, which is then kind of led down this path of potentially he's just this better jealous athlete that wants to get a bit more recognition and I actually wanted to give him a really good chance to explain himself which is why I didn't make this video sooner as he sat down with Shannon Sharp and gave us a bit of a glimpse into his lens of what exactly he meant and everything that has transpired over the last year. Think you brought some of this on yourself with that comment or what were you hoping to accomplish by making that comment? I think the last question that you asked what was I trying to accomplish by making the comment is the most important one. Yes. Everybody sees the clip. Everybody sees 
the thumbnail. Everybody sees the 16 mm -hmm. seconds. But did anybody decide to ask, what was the question that he that was asked to me? The question right. that was asked to me is how do you feel knowing that when you go back to your own country, unlike these other countries that celebrate their athletes on such a humongous stage, when Taboho won his gold medal, he went back to a stadium filled with 30,000 people celebrating. Yes. When I showed up back home on my flight, of course, some people recognized me and I'm very thankful for that. But there was there was mm -hmm. no 30,000 people. Now, to be fair to Noah Lyles, if what he said is true, I understand where he's coming from, because the way that the clip is positioned in a way it was presented to the world, it was presented as if like it was unprompt. Like, what's the point of you even saying this? It came out of the blue. It came out of nowhere. Again, it comes across as hate because you're doing that because it didn't make any sense. But if they asked him, how did he feel about certain things? then sure, I would thoroughly understand what he's coming from. So I decided to go back and rewatch the interview. And unfortunately, of course, that's not what they asked him at all. Congratulations, Noah. Great stuff out there today. Kind of building on that last answer, you've also said that you know, the medals are obviously important, but they're also a stepping stone, a, a catalyst to, to doing more for the sport. Yeah. You know, not just not just personally, but for the sport itself. Uh, you know, can you be a little more specific about what you would like to see happen in the sport? What can improve and, and what can you do, do to help foster that change? So as you can clearly see, um, nothing about how do you feel or what about Americans and representation, none, none of that. It was just talking about the sport in and of itself and winning gold medals and what exactly does that mean? Now to further some fairness, the reporter did say to build off of the previous question. So I went back and I listened to the original question to make sure I got full context. Congratulations. Are you the type of person that wants to transcend athletics and become a generational person like a Usain Bolt or a Michael Jordan and perhaps reach out more globally to people that aren't fans of so that's not what happened. I, I can understand the difference because we have a different way in America of seeing our sports. Problem that I had was you were given the title of a world champion to people who weren't facing the world. That's where I drew the line and said, that's hurtful because you already have those, but you're giving the title to people who aren't doing that. Now, everything that Noah Lyle said right there is very important and has a lot of validity and truth behind it as well. Again, if we're talking about the technicality, the official labeling of being world champions, that sometimes does get handed out to athletes that does not deserve that titling. And to him, that is a title that understandably should be held in high prestige. And so in America, we should also hold him in high regards the same way that a lot of other countries hold their Olympic athletes in high regards as well. But the problem he has, or at least the two problems that he has is A, America isn't the rest of the world. And the reason why that's important is because in America, we produce athletes at a much higher rate than other countries around the world, just because that is a, a, a export that we produce because of our culture. In other countries, it's not the same. And because it's not the same, they only have one or two people to champion and get behind. And so when these players or these athletes when they win at the olympics regardless if it's gold or not they're going to champion them because these are the handful of representation that they have to talk about to champion to celebrate and then the second problem that you have is that at least in terms of like the nba and basketball and even when it comes to like mlb as well we just don't view a lot of what happens in the olympics as competitive basketball in large part because what gets produced in the nba is significantly higher when it turns into the level of basketball that's being played in contrast to what's happening from most of the Olympics. And again, a lot of that just has to do with the fact that the best players around the world are all playing in the NBA. That revealed that while you were negotiating your contract with Adidas, they offered you an invite to a shoe release for Anthony Edwards. And But oh, yeah. what transpired is, is what's being reported. How accurate is that? So what, what was going on at the time? I was in negotiations for over a year with Adidas to get the contract. Them offering me, you know, Know, to, to go to Ants for shoe release had nothing to do with the contract. They just thought it would be cool okay. that I would show up as one of their Adidas athletes. Unfortunately, yes, they asked for I agree. it very late. They asked for it at probably about two weeks in advance, and I was already scheduled to walk in a Hugo Boss show in Milan. But yeah. you probably should have left it as that. Is that the other stuff where you get into trouble?
where people is picking apart what you say it is because like, hold on, I'm the world champ and he's getting this and you have the wherewithal, the forward thinking to see that he's going to be special and why can't you guys see that with me? Now, I will say, being very vulnerable in this moment, I felt very unheard at that moment with Adidas. People do a lot of things. They What, what do you, you do when you feel unheard? You try to shout louder. And mm-hmm. I felt that I've had many conversations trying to shout and it hadn't gotten through. So you're jealous, dog. You're, you're jealous. You are jealous, bro. There's no other way around it. Now, this is my third time re-recording this part of the video because I've been told I'm a bit too harsh in some of my videos on this channel. I'm a bit too critical. I need to be a bit more understanding. So I'm changing, trying to be more positive and I'm going to be very, very graceful. Try not to call Noah Lyles out of his name or anything like that when I give my final synopsis, right? But it's really hard for me to walk away from any of these interviews, any of these interactions, any of these quotes from Noah Lyles and not come to the conclusion that you are just jealous of a lot of the attention, the marketability, the potential amount of money, status that other athletes receive in contrast to you. And to be fair... I understand where some of that comes from, right? Noah Lyles is attempting to be the face of track and field sports, the face of sprinting, the face of American athletes, especially when it comes to the Olympics. And in doing so, he hopes to raise the notoriety, the the publicity, the marketability, the amount of money that's being in the sport, potentially transcended so he can uplift everyone else. Again, he speaks about this in several different interviews. He even spoke about this in a Shannon Sharp interview as well. The marketing in the U.S. is different. I feel one of our True. in the U.S. is is a it turns out when it comes to marketing, entertainment and marketing is the U.S. is bread and butter. And I'm actually going to go as far as to say that's actually his main focus, and he actually doesn't give a shit about the NBA at all. He doesn't care about the NBA whatsoever. And I say this because there's literally a moment in this interview where Shannon Sharp asks him about Jokic, and he doesn't know who that is at all. Is is Nikola Jokic one of the best players in the world? I'm going to be honest, I don't know who that is. <laughs> but more importantly, I believe that Noah Lyles is trying to make sure that the titling of being world-renowned, world champion, world fastest, whatever, is given to the proper people. And in doing so, that's how he believes he's going to be able to market himself and then market his sport accordingly to help it build and grow. But he can't do that if in America there is this misplacement of that titling to a completely different sport that they don't deserve it. Cool. Guys, you now have the title of the world's fastest man. What do you do with that title? You tell them, don't you want to have the shoes of the fat mm-hmm. world's fastest man? Don't you want to put those shoes mm-hmm. on your feet? I'm wearing the same shoes mm-hmm. of the world's fastest man. It's going to make me so fast. And I understand that. But Noah Lyles, you are suffering the same plight that the WNBA players were struggling with as well. It has nothing to do with your gender, nothing to do with your race, nothing to do with your sexual orientation or your preferences, or at least very little to do with those things, but way more to do with how many eyes can you have on the sport? How entertaining is it? How many people are actually consuming it? Because that's the only way that it's going to be viewed as marketable, so more money can be pushed into it, so you can then and try to elevate it and transcend wherever it's at right now. And the reality of it is very similar to WNBA athletes believing that they should receive the same visibility as NBA players or, or NFL or MLB, et cetera, et cetera. The truth of the matter is, is that until you can generate enough eyes in doing so, you cannot force it on somebody. You just can't. And I believe that Olympic athletes have a much bigger problem with this because we only see y'all like once every four years, like, we just being honest with ourselves. But the much bigger problem that Noah Lyles you face is trying to get this message across correctly. Because right now, brother, you're doing way more harm than good. You're not progressing the conversation. You're actually taking a tone in a position that's much more regressive, that's actually having people root against you, not for you, which thus means that you're not as marketable as you're trying to make yourself to be. And even though, yes, what you said was technically correct, but doing so unpromptly, just randomly bringing up NBA players into a conversation that again, wasn't asked at all, that being the focal point of any conversation that you have about your marketability, bro, that comes across as jealousy, hatred, envy. And listening to a lot of your interviews, I do believe that's where a lot of it is based in, even if it is misguided, even if you feel like you're not being heard enough, going down that path 
again, doesn't do your cause any justice at all. But with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you missed my last video, make sure you go check it out here. If not, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be updated on all the new videos that I drop in the channel. And until then, I'll see you all later. Peace.